la belliste speaker, Professor Damiano Zanato uh, from uh, the Department of uh, Mechanical Engineering. And uh, Damiano is also a newly minted uh, NSF career awardee. Congratulations again, Damiano. And the title of uh, Damiano's talk is uh, Biomechatronics and Variable Robotics for Rehabilitation Engineering and the Human Motion Analysis. Damiano, you're on. Thank you. So thank you, Harry. And uh, hi, everyone. I'm really excited to have this opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, the research, what we have been doing in our lab. Uh, so we currently have uh, three um, uh, active lines of research. The first uh, deals, deals with uh, uh, active orthosis for um, gait rehabilitation in uh, patients who suffered uh, uh, a stroke. Um, the second one deals with uh, uh, sensing devices to measure uh, human movement. So here we are looking at uh, a new uh, computational models that helps us that help us uh, to extract more accurate data from these uh, uh, sensors. And the last one um, um, involves the integration of uh, wearable sensors with uh, uh, mobile robots to improve and enrich the interaction between the, the user, the humans, and, uh, and these mobile robots. And the application is uh, um, uh, to uh, help elderly individuals uh, stay active. And so we are uh, with, in collaboration with the Professor Iguo in the Department of uh, uh, electrical and computer uh, uh sorry um electrical and computer engineering we are we are uh, developing this this method so uh, she already talked a little bit about this project last week so in the next few slides i'm going to uh, focus on the first uh, uh, two projects that i mentioned um so next one okay so our uh, work on uh, rehabilitation robotics uh, was motivated by the high uh, incidence of uh, stroke in the united states um, people who suffered a stroke uh, typically cannot walk uh, independently um, even six months after the, the injury and so they require um, intense and repetitive uh, uh, physical therapy. Um, this is typically uh, uh, labor intensive and very physically demanding for, for the therapist. So the goal of rehabilitation robots, it's really to uh, mitigate or reduce uh, this uh, physical burden on, uh, on therapists. Um, the way uh, rehabilitation robots uh, are controlled um, is by mimicking uh, what therapists would do with the patients, right? The interaction a therapist would have with, with the patient. And those uh, type of controllers are um, called uh, uh, assistance needed controller. So the basic idea is uh, uh, to have a target trajectory. So imagine that this red line is uh, 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 the target movement for the subject foot, for example. And then what the robot does is to implement um, a force field around this target trajectory. So the farther away the uh, user's movement is, the larger the force, the assistive force that pushes the foot back towards the um, target trajectory. One of the main drawbacks of this approach is that there is no um, straightforward way to tune the strength of this uh, uh, force field uh, for, uh, to the um, capability of the subject. And uh, if we cannot do that precisely, then we, the risk is that we don't get uh, the desired uh, um, outcomes out of the uh, rehabilitation exercise. So we came up with this idea of developing um, an adaptive assist as needed controller for this uh, active uh, um, orthosis uh, by using the reinforcement learning framework, which is a machine learning control framework where basically a robotic agent um, learns an optimal control policy by repeatedly interacting with uh, the environment. So in our context, the, the, the robot agent is the active orthosis. Um, the um, environment is the user of this orthosis. And uh, the repetitive interaction is given by the walking task, which is inherently a repetitive motion, right? And so we implemented uh, an actor critic control structure where the role of the critic network is to estimate the long-term cost uh, associated with a certain control policy, with the current control policy. And by uh, um, long-term cost, I mean this uh, uh, expected uh, sum 
of uh, negative rewards, which is nothing but uh, uh, the sum, the weighted sum of three error contributions, right? So here, basically, we are quantifying the uh, deviations between uh, the target movement, what we want the subject to do, and what the subject actually uh, is doing. Then the, uh, the actor neural network uh, basically um, learns or modulates uh, uh, in, in real time, this parameter D, which control the uh, strength, the stiffness of the assisted force field, uh, such that the um, expected um, uh, long-term cost matches a certain uh, objective uh, value, an objective um, function that we can adapt step after step. So we, we adjust this uh, objective based on the performance of the user in the last M cycle, in the last M steps. So in other words, if the subject is doing uh, well and the uh, cumulative error is below a certain threshold, what we do is we increase a little bit this control objective and the um, effect of this is to basically relax uh, the um, uh, stiffness of the assistive field. And that makes the, the um, um, force field a little bit more compliant. So we allow the subject to make uh, larger errors. Conversely, if the subject is not doing good, then we reduce this uh, um, uh, control objective and the, the effect is to make the um, uh, force field more uh, stiff. And therefore, uh, we help the subject more. So we tested this approach with a group of uh, um, healthy individuals and the goal here was to um, uh, teach them how to learn a modify uh, trajectory for their ankle and without going too much in details i want to uh, show you basically the um, uh, adaptiveness of the controller so here the colored lines uh, represent the uh, three contribution uh, to the error that i mentioned before uh, x-axis is time, so this is the, 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 the time across a, a training session. And you can see that the control objective uh, given by this function you see is uh, um, modulated continuously by the robot based on the uh, value of the, of the error. And correspondingly, this parameter D that uh, controls the stiffness of the, of the um, force field is continuously adapted as well. Um, the effect of this, so the effect of this uh, continuous modulation among, uh, between uh, a more compliant and a more stiff uh, um, uh, uh, assistive field is to help the subject gradually learn the, the motion that we want him or her to learn. And you can see from here, um, this is basically the average error shown in, in a yellow across different training sessions, T1 to 23. And you can see that session after session, basically the, the, the error is, approxim is uh, um, approaching zero. So the subject basically is learning the motion. And even after we remove the assistant from the, uh, from the robot, there's still some retention there. That's exactly what we want to see after um, a therapeutic session, right? After, after uh, uh, a rehabilitation session. Now, the other uh, uh, line of research that we are involved in deals with the uh, wearable motion capture systems. And, and here, the, the motivation comes from the lack of uh, accuracy that those uh, system, uh, systems uh, often show uh, when compared to their uh, laboratory counterparts, so their, their laboratory instrumentation. Uh, this lack of accuracy actually uh, uh, is critical for um, certain application of motion analysis, and in particular, those related to uh, clinical assessments, uh, screening, um, and diagnosis. So we came up with um, this idea of um, using a machine learning regression uh, model that is called uh, support vector regression to improve the accuracy of uh, the estimate that we obtain with uh, this wearable system. So the idea here is to um, extract uh, uh, the uh, um, parameters of interest, for example, the, the gate parameters in, in, in this case, using uh, standard techniques uh, and then we, we uh, feed the raw estimates from this first step of the, of the uh, data processing uh, along with the uh, uh, other features that are temporal feature and also inertial feature, we feed all these features inside uh, in, in um, 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 uh, regression models that basically reduces the error. So the trick here is that uh, we can train the uh, model by using uh, ground truth data uh, taken from an optical motion capture system or other types of reference systems. And after these models are trained, they can actually be used um, 
uh, for different subjects or for the same subject without the need for the uh, reference script anymore. So you can actually use this system for out of the lab real life uh, um, measurements. Um, and these are some of the applications that we tested for, for these models. Um, we show that uh, the, using these uh, models, we can extract accurate uh, foot level gait parameters during walking and running tasks. But also these models with some modifications can be adapted to estimate continuous gait patterns, such as the uh, center of pressure trajectories, um, ground uh, reaction forces, and also uh, 3D uh, joint angles during, during locomotion. And these are some of the um, uh, clinical applications of, 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 this, uh, uh, the, of these models. Uh, the first panel here show um, experiments that we did on uh, children and toddlers with a neurodevelopmental disorder. And in this case, we were able to identify strong correlations between some of the gate parameters measured by our system and uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, standardized uh, measure of gross motor function. Um, in, in the second uh, panel here, um, we look at uh, uh, um, uh, uh, characterizing overground walking in uh, uh, patients with uh, muscular dystrophy, and we were able to identify uh, a specific uh, uh, patterns of uh, physiological uh, fatigue in these individuals, as well as uh, signature uh, uh, patterns in the foot loading uh, um, uh, that in the foot loading patterns. So basically, in the, in the uh, foot pressure um, that this this uh, um, uh, patients show while while walking. And the third one uh, shows our uh, results on um, uh, elderly individuals. And so in this case, uh, um, we look at associations between measurable gait parameters and uh, uh, the severity of the vestibular handicap in these elderly individuals using our technology. So here you see um, two subjects picked from a sample of uh, 100 and 20 uh, 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 people that we screened. Um, so subject A and B are comparable in terms of uh, uh, sex, in terms of gender, uh, in, terms of, in terms of uh, race and ethnicity. Um, and um, the difference basically in, is in the uh, level of a vestibular handicap. So subject A has a high DHI score, which is a standardized measure of a, a vestibular handicap whereas subject B has a much lower score, indicating mild or no uh, a handicap. And you can see that there is a clear difference in the step-to-step -step noise, not only on, in the um, temporal parameters that is shown here uh, uh, with the top plots, but also in the spatial parameters, in the trajectory of their feet during uh, uh, walking. Um, we are also uh, looking into using this uh, um, uh, online gate analysis capability of our systems um, to develop um, a wearable biofeedback system that can be used for a uh, gait training. So uh, in these plots uh, on the left, um, we show the results of uh, a case study that we run uh, on an uh, older individual. We ask her to um, perform a 10 um, gait training sessions, uh, uh, morning and afternoon for one week. She first uh, uh, went through these uh, training sessions uh, without uh, any uh, vibrotactile feedback. And then after a washout period, we asked her to repeat again the same uh, uh, training, this time by providing a step synchronized haptic feedback, so vibrations uh, at their feet. And what we show is that actually she was able to improve in several gait parameters uh, after training and, and the improvements were uh, um, more consistent uh, when the vibrations were, were uh, turned on. Uh, this is a, a more recent result that we um, did on a, a wearable um, uh, biofeedback system. The idea here is to modulate the timing of these uh, plantar vibrations uh, so as to um, uh, adjust the sensory references in, uh, in, uh, in the subject. And the, 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 this, this process basically allows us to um, uh, achieve a certain um, uh, target outcome, such as in this case, uh, control the, the, the velocity, the walking speed of the, of the subject by just uh, modulating the timing at which these uh, vibrations were, were um, provided in an adaptive way. And uh, with that, I'd be happy to take any, any uh, question from the audience. Thanks much, Damiano. 
very impressive work, especially on the clinical assessment end. So you, you're very farther, farther along, right, in terms of uh, pushing your technology to maybe the clinical side yeah. to use. We are, we are lucky enough to, to have ongoing collaboration with a, a clinical researcher uh, across the river in Columbia University Medical Center. So uh, yes, it, this is a kind of exciting for us to be able to collaborate with them and have firsthand experience with patients.